One thing to get straight up front is that mobile homes are not really mobile. So the homeowner's security is inextricably tied to the owner of the land it sits on, the park owner. Linda Walshock bought a brand new manufactured home in Mission View Mobile Home Park four years ago after she suffered a series of strokes and had to stop working. We've been priced out of stick-built homes. We've been priced out of apartments. And the only option that was really available to us was manufactured homes. Walshaw paid a premium for the new house, $120,000 at the peak of the market. Because it was in a rent-controlled park, she knew she'd never be priced out. But last year, the Oceanside City Council passed an ordinance to phase out rent control in the parks. That means park owners could raise rents from a few hundred dollars a month to a thousand or more. Walshaw says her home lost value like every other house in San Diego, but without rent control, the value has plummeted. Because... If they can raise the rents without limit, then no other buyer is going to want this house. I've invested my life savings in this house. I've already lost a great deal of money since I moved into it, and this will take the rest. If I lose this home, I lose everything. So who would gain? The mobile home park owners, whose profits have been gradually eroded over the years by rent control, imposed back in 1984 by the city of Oceanside. City Councilman Jerry Kern, who is running for mayor this year, thinks it's time to overturn rent control. He says no one will be forced from their homes because Prop E is actually vacancy decontrol, which means the rent can only change after a homeowner sells. The existing residents do not lose rent control. They get to keep rent control as long as they live in their coach. Only after they move does it go to market rate. Oceanside passed rent control originally to provide affordable housing for its seniors and veterans, but Kern says there's no way of knowing if low-income people are the ones buying mobile homes. Because there's no means testing for mobile homes. Kern says some people use mobile homes as their second home. He argues the city has spent nearly $8 million administering the program. City staff reports suggest that number is closer to $4 million and is covered by fees paid to the city by the mobile home owners and the park owners. Kern says the city should not be supporting a program that interferes with the market and private property rights. We cannot have the city paying for a program that in essence is taking away property rights from the landowner and transferring to somebody else. It's a tricky situation, balancing the rights of the landowners with the rights of the homeowner. Mobile homeowners have rallied and put the issue on the ballot. Miramar Park resident Bob Ryan, a retired veteran, is fighting to save rent control. There are people in here that live on Social Security. That's all they live on. I mean, they get $900 a month that pays their rent, it gives them their food to live on, pays their utilities. It just, it's, it's sad that those people are going to be impacted by this. And... If they're not impacted immediately, they will be within a year or two. Ryan says there are people who've tried to sell, perhaps to finance their transition to assisted living, but couldn't find a buyer willing to risk hefty rent increases. They ended up selling to the park owner for pennies on the dollar. Ryan says the park owners could raise rents as a way to force people out and then turn the land over to more profitable developments. At a recent forum on Oceanside's cable channel KOCT, Amy Epstein said that's not going to happen. Epston is part of a family-owned mobile home park business. We're not in the development or apartment or anything, any other business like that. We're in the mobile home park business. Epston's grandfather built some of the first mobile home parks decades ago. When vacancy decontrol passes, the owners will have a pride of ownership again. They'll want to, you know, uh, you know, create more amenities in the park and they'll want to redo the streets and, you know, upgrade the electric and, you know, fix the pools and the decks. I mean, that, that stuff costs money and right now there's not money to do it, but with vacancy decontrol, that money would be there. Epston says several of Oceanside's parks are family operations, but most are run by large corporations, some from out of town. Park owners have poured almost $300,000 into the campaign to pass Proposition E. The Oceanside City Councilwoman who originally brought in rent control in the parks back in 1984 is Melba Bishop. She says this initiative marks a significant shift in Oceanside's politics, but she says it's about more than politics. Remember that this issue is about your mom and your dad who are living in, can live in a place where they can take care of themselves or they can come and live with you. The vote in June does pit one kind of property owner against another, and it will be a bellwether of the changing political climate in Oceanside.